Hello general chemistry students. This is the third video in week 10 and we're going to be discussing reaction orders or orders of reactions. Alright, so in this video we're going to be talking about the factors that affect rates of reactions. We're going to describe how temp temperature uh, affects rates of reactions. We're going to look at catalysts and also determine rate laws um, based on experimental data. Okay, so we're just going to talk about uh, the order of reaction, what that means in terms of the rate laws. Right, so the factors that affect reaction rate, um, first of all, the reactants themselves are going to affect reaction rate and, and basically what state they're in. So for instance, for example, Small molecules will tend to react faster than larger molecules because they have more kinetic energy. Uh, gases tend to react faster than liquids, um, which then react faster than solids, again, because of the kinetic energy. Powdered solids are more reactive than blocks of solids, and this is due to more surface area of the powder. Uh, certain types of metals uh, can react very quickly or more reactive than others. For instance, uh, uh, group 1 alkali metals are very reactive. Um, and then also ions will tend to react faster than molecules because we're, uh, we don't need to break bonds in this case. So, so another factor that's going to affect the reaction rate is temperature. And sort of what a rule of thumb that chemists use is that for every 10 degrees of temperature, so raising the, the temperature 10 degrees, gives you about a uh, doubling of the reaction. And this is really true for, many, for most reactions, um, of course, but not for all. And there's actually a mathematical relationship between temperature and the speed of reaction that we'll talk about uh, later. And this will be um, when we talk about the Arrhenius equation. How does rate affect, or how is, how is rate affected by temperature? Another factor that's going to affect the rate of reaction is the presence of a catalyst. And the, really the definition of a catalyst is that it's part of the reaction, but it's not being consumed by the reaction. Catas catalysts typically speed up a reaction, but that's not always the case. So we have positive catalysts. These are catalysts that will speed up a reaction, and we also have negative catalysts. And these will, are, will be uh, compounds that will slow down a reaction. And when we talk about catalysis, we are talking about either homogeneous or heterogeneous catalysis. Where homogeneous, you can think of all in solution or present in the same phase. So it might be all gases, might be in solution. Um, that's homogeneous. Well, heterogeneous is when they're in different phases. So many times there are solid phase reactions um, that convert gases. And that would be considered a heterogeneous reaction because we're working with a solid um, and reacting with a gas. All right, so we're going to talk about catalysts and how they behave later on um, in the when we talk about kinetics. So another factor that's going to affect rate is going to be reactant concentration, and really. Uh, what that means is the, the more molecules you have, the faster the reaction is going to go. Uh, so what's really what's happening is you're increasing the frequency of collisions or frequency of contact between those molecules, leading to more and more product to get out. And we can also think of this in terms of reactions with gases. So you are essentially increasing the pressure of the gas higher concentration, higher pressure, that leads to a faster reaction rate. All right, and then concentrations um, of solutions. So uh, particularly molarity, we're gonna deal with molarity a lot when we talk about reactant, or when we talk about concentrations or reactant concentrations. All right, so that leads us into the rate law. And really, the rate law is a mathematical representation of the relationships between concentrations and the rate, right? And, 
and and they're modulated by this thing called k, which is the rate constant. So the rate law, importantly, the rate law must be determined experimentally. You cannot look at a reaction and determine the rate law. It has to be determined experimentally. And what it's going to represent is that the rate of reaction, it's proportionality to the concentration of each reactant. And per, when I say proportionality, I mean because the reactant is going to be raised to a power. It's going to be raised to either the n power or m power, and those uh, um, will be called the orders of the reactants. Okay, so imagine a reaction you have A plus B goes to products. And then we can formulate a reaction, uh, a rate law based on this reaction where rate is equal to your proportionality constant or your rate constant times the concentration of n to the n or concentration of a to the n power times the concentration of b to the m power. And if you want to know the overall rate of the reaction, you would add them up. So n plus m is equal to the overall order of the reaction. All right, so the exponent on each reaction gives the order with respect to that reactant. The sum of those exponents is the order of the reaction. Okay, so let's look at this reaction. If we define this rate law as rate equals k, so your rate constant, times NO concentration to the second power, times the O2 concentration. What we can say then is that the reaction is second order with respect to NO. It is first order with respect to O2, because we have a one here. And then it's third, o, third order overall, because two plus one equals three. All right, so let's look at these sample rate laws. Okay, so here what we can say um, for the first reaction is that the, the rate is first order with respect to CH3CN, and it's first order overall. All right, in the second reaction, we can say that the rate is, um, or the reaction is three halves order. All right, so these don't have to be integers and they don't have to be positive. All right, and then in the second, we can say that the reaction is first order with respect to N2O5 and first order overall. In the fourth reaction, we can say it's first order with respect to H2 and I2 and second order overall. All right, let's look at the last reaction, okay? So here we have first order with respect to the tantalum, first order with respect to the dimercury, but then we have um, that then we have Hg plus two uh, to the negative one. Okay, so what does that mean? So this bottom reaction is what's called at autocatalytic because the product affects the rate, all right? This is important right here. The product affects the rate of reaction. And so in this case, that mercury two plus is called a negative catalyst. So I told you we could have positive and we can have negative catalyst. What that means then is that if I increase the concentration of that product, it's increasing, um, it is slowing down the overall reaction uh, with that concentration. So it's a negative one. It's a negative catalyst. It's slowing down the reaction. All right, so that's it for the third video. Um,